Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Simi Bhagat. With me, I have another expert, Sarika Agarwal. Today, we are here to discuss with you some traditional embroideries of India and the materials used for embroidery. We all know that India is a land of traditions. There is a harmonious blend of art, religion and philosophy in the Indian culture. Every state of India has something unique to offer. India is known worldwide for its rich traditional textiles. There are numerous embroideries that exist, but in today's session, we will focus only on some of the most popular embroidery forms. You can see some of the samples over here, which are done with hand. This is the hand embroidery. And Sarika will now show you a sample of machine embroidery. So looking at these, you can see that embroidery is the art of creating decorative designs on the surface of the fabric, which uses stitches that can be made with the help of needle and thread. And it can be either with hand or by machine that you have just seen. It can be beautifully described as a painting with needle and thread. So embroidery has always played a very significant role in the lives of Indian people. It is an art which both men and women have practiced not only to satisfy their creative urge, but also it is a form of earning as a living. You can see over here in the map of India that embroidery comes from different states of India, like Kashida of Kashmir, Chikankari of Lucknow, Pulkari of Punjab, Kantha of Bengal, Sindhi Taropa and Kach embroidery of Gujarat, and Kasuti of Karnataka. Now let us see all one by one. Pulkari, as you can see over here, Sarika, can we have a sample of Fulkari? Fulkari is an embroidery art which is from Punjab, a North Indian state in India. It is considered to be auspicious, a symbol of happiness and prosperity. You will be surprised to know that this Fulkari has been done on special occasions for weddings, for mothers of newborn and for babies and e even you will see that the moment a baby is born in the family, grandmother starts making a fulkari at home. But gradually, as it has gained popularity, it was and is being produced for commercial purposes also. You can see a very beautiful piece of embroidery over here. This is the fulkari of Punjab, which is done by hand. Here you can see some more pictures of fulkari which are done on fan, which is done on cushion cover. There are dupattas, there are ornis. So these are some of the products which are made in fulkari. Now coming to the second state, that is the Gujarat, which is situated in the western part of India. It is famous for embroidery which is known as Sindhi Taropa or Mochi Bharat or it is also sometimes called Kach and Kachavar embroidery. So as you can see in the piece over here, which will, uh, Sarika is showing you, the beauty of this lies in the rich designs, variety of motives and stitches which are used for embroidery. While this embroidery was essentially seen on garments, it encompasses a wide variety of artifacts, which includes bags, cushion covers, wall panels, jackets, mobile pouches and dupattas and many, many more things. There are some more pieces which you can see. You can see the beautiful colors, the vibrancy in these products. Now the next one is from our famous state Uttar Pradesh that is known as, embroidery is known as Chikinkari. It is sometimes also known as, commonly known as shadow work. It provides employment to thousands of people. Chicken work is no more confined to traditional salwar kameez, kurta, pajama and saris, but it is delight to wear and watch in almost all kinds of western wear like tops, designer kurtas, lehengas, etc. As Sarika is showing you, you can see a beautiful sari over here in chicken curry. There is a beautiful dupatta and very popularly seen on white on white. So as you can see over here, it gives a shadow effect. These are some more pieces which you can see in the pictures. So kurtas are there, dupattas are there, saris are there. Next one is famous embroidery from Kashmir, which is known as Kashida. This is known for its beauty, color, motive, design and texture. And you'll see over here, as Sarika can show you, 
the embroidery is inspired from natural motives. As we all know, Kashmir is famous for the natural beauty. So over here, most of the designs are very natural. And another important thing is Kashmiri men are expert in this embroidery. In Srinagar, it is a tradition which a father passes to his son as a hereditary profession. Some of the pieces you can see over here. So this is done on kurtas, this is done on cushion covers, also done on shawl. Embroidery stitches are generally long and short and chain stitch. Now coming to the next one, Kantha. Kantha is a traditional folk art embroidery from West Bengal. This also you can see that you know sometimes it's also used as wraps which are kept on the shoulders. But in this piece which Sarika is showing you, it is a ball hanging. And look at the motives, they are so folk in nature, they are so simple in nature which have been just taken from the daily life. These are some more designs which you can see. So again, as we see, most of these traditional embroideries which started as a household need, but now they are being commercialized and used on various products. So you can see blouse pieces, bed covers, saris, and you know, other quilts, etc., which are also made in this. Now talking about the Karnataka embroidery, which is known as Kasuti. Sarika can so show you one piece over here, which is done on sari. So this embroidery, as you can see, done by hand, and it is identical from both right and wrong side. There are variety of stitches which are used to obtain the desired patterns. These are some more designs also you can see and the kind of new things which are being made like file folders, purses, of course saris are there, cholis are there and lot of other things also being made today like the tablecloth and cushion covers. So this is all, you know, which I just wanted to tell you about the traditional embroideries of India. So from here, now Sarika will take over to you and uh, tell you about the materials and equipments which we are going to use in embroidery. Thank you so much, ma'am, for introducing us to some of the most popular embroidery arts of India. It is fascinating to know and learn about the rich textile traditions of our country. As we have already got an idea about some of the popular embroideries, we will now in this session discuss the various equipment and materials required for embroidery. The most basic tool that is required for embroidery is the needle. As you can see, a needle has three main parts, eye, shaft and tip. There are various types of embroidery needles available in the market. Their selection depends upon the type of embroidery to be done. As I had just mentioned that there are a variety of needles available in the market. These are some of the different types that you may find. Cruel needles, they have medium to long eye and a sharp tip and they are generally used for surface embroidery. Tapestry needles, they have a long eye and blunt tip and they are used for counted thread embroidery done on a thicker fabric. Chanel needles, they have long eye and sharp tip and they are used for surface embroidery with thicker threads. Milliner needles, they have round eye, sharp tip and they are used for bullion knots and cast on stitches. Besides these, there are also specialty needles available for embroidery work, which mainly include curved needles and beading needles. Another tool that is used while doing embroidery is thimble. It is a small metal or plastic cap with a closed end. It is worn for protection on the finger that pushes the needle in sewing. Traditionally, as the embroidery work was a major activity, thimble was very much used. However, nowadays, due to comparatively lesser engagement of people in embroidery at home, thimble is not very popular. Scissor is an important tool that we all must possess while we do embroidery. Embroidery scissors are small with sharp, narrow pointed blades. Mainly, there are two types of scissors that are used for embroidery. For long life, 
they should only be used for cutting threads or we should get them sharpened occasionally. Another important material that is required for embroidery is the embroidery thread. The texture of the embroidery depends upon the kind of thread used. Embroidery thread is yarn that is manufactured or hand spun specifically for embroidery and other forms of needlework. There are a variety of threads available in the market. As you can see, we have cotton embroidery threads, silk floss, silk threads and metallic threads. Use the type of thread or weight that looks best or has the effect you want to achieve in your embroidery. Another necessary equipment for embroidery is the embroidery frame, which are again of two types. We have the embroidery hoop and the slate frame. Embroidery hoop is a ring consisting of two parts as you can see here, inner hoop and outer hoop that has a screw hardware to tighten the hoops together. Slate frame is used for very specialized hand embroideries like zardozi, sequins and beadwork. The fabric to be embroidered is stretched on the frame on all the four sides. These frames hold the fabric tightly and evenly. Hence, the stitches are more likely to be neat and accurate than if the fabric was held in the hand while working. Other essentials required for embroidery include fabrics, design and materials required for transferring the design. Embroidery may also incorporate materials such as pearls, beads, quills and sequins as you can see. So in today's session we have learned that embroidery is the art of creating decorative designs on the surface of a fabric using stitches that can be made with the help of needle and thread. The different traditional embroideries of India, which include Fulkari of Punjab, Kantha of Bengal, Chikankari of Lucknow, Kasuti of Karnataka, Kashida of Kashmir, and Sindhi and Kutch of Gujarat. Also, we have learned about the various materials and equipment required for embroidery. Thank you.